Before we start things today, very important announcement. Kylian Mbappe is good at football. Nine goals in three league games. He's on fire. One player of the month. Uh, yeah, let's hope he can get a few more today. Yes, folks, how is it going? And welcome back to Newcastle. Today, we have a huge doubleheader in the league. Two games which I'm hoping we're going to win and they're going to set us on our merry way for the year. We have Liverpool and Manchester City in the league. The first game at home, the second at the City ground. Two games that, if we win, put us in a really, really good position to hopefully retain our Premier League title. Now, since we're last here, the transfer window has slammed shut. Did I do any business? Yes, I actually did. And some sensible dis business, I'd like to think as well. I'll let you guys be the judge. In terms of transfers, Peter Paul has gone out on loan to Swansea, an opportunity for him to get some regular first-team football, and perhaps the big headline sale, I sold a fan favourite. I say a fan favourite, I'm the fan. I don't know, did anyone else like Ransford, Yeboah, any other fans? Please let me know. I, I had a soft spot for him. But in the end, I decided to sell him for £24.5 million on deadline day. Um, it's not as much money as I would have liked to have got for him, but I just feel like with the strikers that we've got, never really going to play enough. And in his place, I've signed a player for half the price from Brazil. We've picked up here Bruno Eti. And that's definitely not how you say his name. Please let me know down in the comments how to say it, Brazilian viewers. I know we have a hardcore Brazilian contingent. I hope you're going to approve of this signing. Bruno here is a under-20 Brazilian striker, had a release clause in his contract. Really, really good mentals, to be honest. Great determination. His physicals are very good. He's either footed bags of potential. And I think we've got an absolute steal at £12 million, to be honest. Really, really excited to see what he can kind of turn into. And as a fifth-choice striker for our squad, I think he's a very good alternative to Ransford Yeboah. Definitely not as good, but considering we've signed him for half the price and he's 18 years old, it's part of a long-term building project here. And while speaking of the project, I did end up spending a lot of our other transfer budget and I put it in to some players for the future. Another player joining us from Flamengo is Leonidas. This guy has just turned 18 years old and I say we've put money into youngsters. Actually, we've picked him up on a free transfer. His contract was expiring. He's a very, very good goalkeeper though. We've currently got him on trial at the club. I had him on trial just to have a look at how good he is. You can see, looking at him here, amazing potential for a goalkeeper. 18 years old, one for the future. We'll get homegrown at club as well um, upon him completing three years at the club, which is always nice. Elsewhere, a couple of younger players have also joined us. The first is Momar and Dom, who has been picked up by uh, us from Elche. In the end, we spent, I want to say, like 11 million for him. Yeah, 11 and a half million pounds. Bit of a weird one, this. He's a defensive midfielder, but personally, I think he'd be a really, really good wing back. Um, I know some people are going to ask, Jack, if this is your last season, why do you want to sign youngsters? Um, the reason is, for people who don't know, we've, when we get to the end of our Let's Plays, I like to holiday forward into the future. And uh, so I want to set the club up for long-term success. Hopefully these kind of last gifts I give to the squad are kind of going to be part of the next generation that come through at Newcastle. Another player we picked up is another wing-back, actually. It's Alex Esteban, who is a right-back. He is considered Real Madrid's hot prospect, and uh, he had a release clause in his contract of £3.5 million. I triggered it. We've signed him. He looks absolutely phenomenal, hoping he will turn into a very special talent for the squad. Elsewhere, one of the youngsters that we have had agreed to be signed for ages. Remember Mascarenas? Yeah, we agreed to sign him, I think, when he was 15. Uh, he's going to join us in a couple of months. So we've been waiting forever. He's almost here, the Cape Verdean. Uh, yeah, a very, very good footballer, it has to be said. So that's what's been going on in terms of transfers, long-term investment, a new striker in the squad for depth. And uh, well, in terms of the actual team performance, it's been a really, really good start to the season. You can see this sea of green, Andy Ami getting goals, Calvert-Lewin getting goals, Yusuf Demir, perhaps the player of the season so far, ahead of Mbappe. That might be a hot take. I suppose before we delve into the, the game, we should talk about the matches since you were last here. Of course, last episode, we rounded up a good little double header with a 6-1 win against Sheffield United. To end the month of August, we got a 3-0 win against West Ham and Kylian Mbappe with two in this game. He then grabbed another two as we beat Aston Villa by the exact same scoreline at home. Against Southampton, after an international break, we came back and Kylian Mbappe Grabbed another pair of goals. And most recently, we took on Malmo in the Champions League. Won this one 5-0. Adiemi got every single goal. 
I feel like he's not taken well to being dropped uh, as our regular first team forward. But in this game here, playing with a rotated 11, he was a really, really impressive player for us. Alongside Aguiar, who this year is definitely going to get more and more football. He really is the now the backup, I suppose, to Calvert-Lewin, the alternative to Sesco. And uh, so far, really good start to the year. Very excited for what he might be able to provide for us. Just looking at the Champions League, obviously we've played the first game in the group stage. Our other teams in this group alongside Malmo are Shakhtar and AS Monaco. It's not the easiest group. At the same time, it's not really a group of death. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to navigate this with relative ease. Um, the early signs after a 5-0 victory are that it's going to be quite good. Also, Adiemi got five. Aguiar did get three of them. Also, I've been saying Aguiar. It's not Aguiar, it's Aguilar. It's not double L, so it's not a Y sound, Jack. Maybe I should just call him Christian. I mean, let's be real for a moment. If you're here for correct pronunciations, you've come to the wrong place. And I, I can only really apologise for it. We need to set our team up also for this league game. Get our best 11 on display. Fortunately for me, I've got it set up as a preset. So one click and we're ready and raring to go. Today's first opposition is Liverpool. We have got a game against Rochdale in midweek. I decided that probably wasn't a game that you would want to see in an episode as we probably demolish them. Um, as a result, we're back for this first game. Of course, Van Dyke playing against his former club for the first time since he joined us. Since he has joined us, his acceleration and pace have declined, which uh, isn't ideal. But if we just have a quick look, I have set up some mentoring groups and he is currently mentoring Johansson, who I think, you know, he could become the next Virgil Van Dyke. I feel like that's quite the tag to latch on to a player. But no, we have got a kind of a conveyor belt of mentoring going on here, trying to get some of our younger players in the best possible position to develop when it comes to their personalities and their hidden attributes. Um, and it, it's a good little setup. Van Dyke, of course, does contribute to that massively, not just on the pitch. Elsewhere in the team, as I said, it's full strength. But can anyone spot anything different today? Anyone? Any? Uh, yeah, that's right. We've changed a midfielder role. For this final year, I feel like experimenting a little bit more. I have ditched the centre mid on defend in favour of a roaming playmaker. Now, this is experimental. It's not really been tested just yet. The early signs, though, have been that we score a lot of goals with it. So I'm going to kind of persist with it and see how we get on. Um, and Jude Bellingham is almost the best roaming playmaker in the game. In fact, I'd go as far to say as he is the best roaming playmaker in the game. He is absolutely ridiculous, Jude Bellingham in FM22. Of course, without the centre mid on defend, I do feel like our back three are going to be a left a little more exposed. Ultimately, it's going to come down to, is the trade-off worth it? Are we going to create significantly more opportunities and score more goals with Jude Bellingham as a roaming playmaker than the goals that we concede? And if the answer is yes, then we'll stick with this. But inevitably, we are maybe going to be a little more leaky at the back. We have trialled it in a few games and it's worked fine. Today is probably the first real test for it, though. And if we start leaking goals, um, I know where to point and potentially identify as the problem area. Now, I'll level with you. Didn't really want to come back for these games against Liverpool and Man City just because I feel like we play them all the time. But they are the biggest teams in England. They are the teams that are going to be our main rivals, you'd imagine, this year. And if we can win both these games comfortably, I suddenly feel a lot less pressure to show you each and every league game. So if we could get a good start here, we could be, uh, well, in a really good position early on in the league season when it comes to a title fight. We are currently top, so we're looking to defend our crown and defend our crown, we just might. Liveramento dinks it in. Calvert-Lewin, the former Evertonian, scores against, well, the other side from Merseyside. Um, that was really nicely worked, actually. We got the ball into the box. So many players queuing up. Bellingham getting more into the area as a roaming playmaker. Liveramento dinks it. And Calvert-Lewin, lovely little header, doing what we pay him to do, lurking away, nods it in. 1-0 after 10 minutes. Halfway through the first half here, we are absolutely dominating this game early on. Liverpool not really creating a lot, despite having ever so slightly more of the ball. Mbappe's been quiet so far. I bigged him up in the intro. He's been all over the place for us getting goals. And well, on this occasion, he's turn provider. Calvert-Lewin nods it in. And uh, well, Mbappe has been getting a lot of goals as of late. I think he got one assist last month. It's a new month now. He's got an assist in the first league game of it. Runs down the byline, skips past the tackle, uses his pace to get in to a really good area to put the ball on a plate. And Calvert-Lewin, not going to miss from there. On the far side again, I'll tell you what, the left side of Liverpool is not having a good day today. Robertson is not having fun. Well, maybe Liverpool are going to look to issue a response. Or maybe Ansu Fati is just going to run straight into 
Well, a dead end there and end up surrendering the ball. Livramento inside to Bellingham, whips it in towards Mbappe, who hits it in off the post. There is questions of offside. I think he's on here. This is a sensational finish if it is onside. I thought for a second he might square it to Calvert-Lewin for the hat-trick, but he wasn't feeling generous, was Kylian Mbappe. Fafana, Livramento, Jude Bellingham just getting slightly higher up the pitch here. Plays it through superbly, and then that finish there... I mean, Alisson is one of the best players in the world in this save game. He's not stopping that one. And for those wondering, was it offside? Was it close? Look at that. He's timed his run to perfection, according to Football Manager. In 3D, he looks slightly off. If we watched it in 2D, it'd be onside. I feel like the animations don't always, you know, perfectly line up with players and such. Anyway, we've got a chance here. Calvert-Lewin looking for his hat-trick. I think it was actually Fafana there heading over. If we could make it 4-0 before half-time, that'd be amazing. That said... I'm rather happy with three here. We have been just all over them in this game. Liverpool creating nothing. There's only one option to click here, isn't there, really? I'm very happy. Like, I'm not going to tell the players I'm not happy. We're playing against Liverpool, a very, very good team. And we are oh, putting in a really commanding performance so far in this game. I'd like to believe we can go out and get a few more. Really ruin their goal difference and get our confidence flowing. Anyway, big ball over the top. Gavardiol mopping up the play there. I forgot to mention, Guardiol has signed a new contract with the club. Alongside all the young players I'm looking to sign for the future, I have been looking to renew a lot of players' contracts so that they're not just going to leave as soon as I leave the club. Players like Guardiol had a couple of years left after this season um, and he's committed his long-term future to the club, which is absolutely fantastic. I think the ref's just given a penalty here for a push on Calvert-Lewin. I think it was Trent Alexander-Arnold, the culprit. The corner went all the way over everyone in the end, but yeah, penalty given. Calvert-Lewin for the hat-trick. Can he score it to keep his great start to the season going? No, uh, that was bizarre, wasn't it? I think Alisson tipped that onto the crossbar and it's gone straight up in the air. I really thought he was going to score there and he's just let me down. Okay, so really good performance in this game, but we probably should rotate things around. Paulo Bernardo, who's one of the, the players that obviously we snapped up this year, been using him very regularly as a sub. I'm quite a big fan of him just because of how versatile he is. He's going to come in as the roaming playmaker for us here. Elsewhere in the team, Van Dijk not having a very good game. I'm going to take him off for Tomori just to be safe. And I think we'll save our last sub for now. We'll keep it in our back pocket just with 29 minutes left. I'd rather not go down a man, use all my subs, then get an injury. So we're 20 minutes into this half. It's been a bit calm after the first half, but there might be an opportunity here for Paulo Bernardo to get his first goal at the club. And I talked about the fact I've been a fan of him. I'm becoming an even bigger fan of him. That was all very simple, though. Ball worked on this near side. The throw-in, Livramento, Mbappe just holds it up a little bit, lays it inside to Livramento. Bernardo just given the whole goal at his mercy, slots into the bottom corner. It's 4-0. And, uh, wow. I mean, what a performance this has been. This has been rampant. It could even get worse. Demir, for far, a glancing header hits the woodwork. James Madison manages to get it out for the corner. I mean, Liverpool just straight up not having a good time here. I will say as well, really impressed by the roaming playmaker in this game particularly. There was a game where I was worried that we might get a little bit exposed with our new centre-mid setup. This is one of those games that I might have worried about, not having the centre-mid on defend. I suppose one thing that is worth acknowledging is they aren't playing with a centre-attack in mid. I feel like playing against a top-quality team with a number 10 might be a better test of how we fare with kind of the more offensive centre-mid setup. And, uh, well, for those wondering, is Calvert-Lewin just not going to get the hat-trick in this game? Don't you fret. He might have missed a penalty. He scored his third header of the game. His first from a corner, though. Demir puts it in. Calvert-Lewin glances it across goal. That makes it 5-0. And Liverpool firmly mudded in this game. Fabinho on a 5.8. Alisson has conceded five goals and is on an 8.6. There might even be another opportunity here. Mbappe hits it on the volley. Alisson Becker saves it. Mbappe was offside there anyway, so it wouldn't have counted. And I think that is going to be all she wrote for this one. We are, well, beyond the, the minimum added time. Maybe one last chance here as Kai Havertz looks to find Mbappe. Doesn't matter that it's not gotten the way it needed to. We've won this game. And when you look at that XG story, it's a very boring story that involved one team just running rampant. What a superb performance. We even missed a penalty just to be kind to them. Very, very happy with that one. That is what I wanted to see. Um, Liverpool, prior to this, had been struggling quite a bit. So to get a win here against them really puts them 
in a dire situation. Of course, as I already mentioned, we've got Man City to play next away from home. This is a game that we traditionally struggling. We have got Rochdale in midweek. I'm going to play a B team for that. I'll join you in a moment. Man City, our next opposition. If we could get another big win here, that would make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. I'm trying to work out if I should start with the good news or the bad news. I think we'll go with the good news first. The good news is we've beaten Rochdale 7-1. Aguilar got four goals and an assist. Andy Emi got a goal. Pretty good team performance. We were taking on Rochdale, mind you. So not entirely sure how much we can take away from that performance. The bad news... Calvert-Lewin tore his calf muscle in the middle of the week and is out for two to three months. Yeah. Um, mm. So you might be wondering, Jack, what's the plan? Now, there is two options really here. I could play Adiemi, potentially as the pressing forward, or I could go with Christian Aguilar, the guy who I always forget exists. I never say his name correctly, but I'm going to try and make a conscious effort to fix it now. Do I give him the nod and give him the chance to show us what he's capable of. And you know what? I am going to give him a chance to show us what he's capable of. You can see here as a pressing forward, maybe like some of the more aggressive mentals that you want from a defensive element of a pressing forward. But in terms of his actual technical ability, in terms of his physicals, he is a very, very, very good player. Also in the 3D match engine, he has a green headband. So, I mean, if there wasn't any of, you know, enough reasons to play him, that just sways it for me. So he's going to get the nod today. As we take on Man City. Now, Man City are good. Uh, spoilers, they're very good. Um, in terms of the team, though, I'm hoping it's going to be a team up to the task. Uh, besides Aguilar, no one else in this entire team played against Rochdale, at least as a starter. So we are ready and refreshed. I am interested to see if they do play with a centre-attacking mid. As I have already alluded to, the one thing that scares me about the centre-mid role change that we've done is if they have a centre attack in mid, because I do feel like he will get a bit of freedom. Now, it'll be interesting to see when the day comes, how the defence gets on. That day is not going to come today, though. They are playing a 4-3-3, the exact same shape we came up against against Liverpool. I mean, even with Aguilar in the team, it's a pretty blooming good squad at our disposal. And Aguilar did win the kind of next-gen award for the best wonder kid in the world of football. So this would be quite a sensational way for him to make a name for himself. Away from home, against Man City, our big title rivals. Let's see what he's capable of. Man City free kick on this near side. It's going to be Saka taking it. There's something quite cursed, I feel like, about Saka, Haaland and James Ward-Prowse all playing in Man City colours. And I think it's even more cursed now because they've all just been involved in a goal that we've conceded. Raheem Sterling slots it into the bottom corner. And I feel like we were just asleep here, to be honest. I mean, that is a, that is not a great tackle, is it, by Alfonso Davies? Sterling gets the wrong side of him. The tackle was mistimed at best, ill-judged at worst. I mean, it was it was just terrible. There's there's no way of excusing it. And now Guillaume's picked up a knock. Could be a twisted knee. Apparently, I should. Oh, that's a, oh. There's two injuries here. Oh God. So Guillaume's might have pulled his hamstring. Fafana's wants to come off. With a twisted knee. I'm going to have to take off Fafana and bring in Tamori. Do I want to make both subs inside the first 16 minutes? You know what, Aguilar? I'm hoping you can run it off, son. You're going to be fine. I hope. I hope he's going to be fine. We'll see how he gets on. Two injuries inside the first 20 minutes is not what I want to see, especially after we've rotated our team going into this game, trying to minimise the match load on our players. It doesn't seem to have worked, sadly. Although we might have an opportunity here. And Mbappe for on goal. Goes around the keeper. Hits the woodwork. How has he missed that? I spent £166 million to watch Kylian Mbappe miss an open goal. Ten minutes left of the half. Not been a lively affair. Not many chances for either team. But another one here potentially for us. We look to build the ball out from the back. Although Alfonso Davies, who just doesn't seem to be at the races today. Is he okay? He's having a daydream. Wagnerman goes for glory. Gets no glory. That was woeful and I'm not sure why we've been shown that by the game to be honest we're on the verge of half time here but into another highlight potentially another opportunity we go Kai Havertz to Virgil van Dijk at the back now with Jude Bellingham he will drop deep as a roaming playmaker to collect the ball just like he did there and well he's speaking of Jude Bellingham he's now at the edge of the 18 yard box looking to cross it in it's dealt with Nedison plucks a header away in the end three minutes of added time so pl plenty to be added on here plenty of time for potentially another highlight as 
Well, Man City attempt to play it out from the back. We gobble up possession, though, before Havertz gifts it back. And that's with Joao Felix. Throw on goal on this near side. Can he bend it in? He absolutely can. And from one end of the pitch to the other, in a matter of well, seconds, Man City double their lead in this game at home. And after we just destroyed Liverpool, this is not what I wanted nor expected to see. So a tidy finish at the end of it. Finessed into the bottom corner. I mean, it's not going to be a pleasant team talk, let me tell you, folks. Now, I could give them a cuddle. I'm not giving them a cuddle. I'm throwing a water bowl. What was that? Like, come on, lads, seriously. We are the better team. We've probably had some of the better play in this match, to be honest. But we're not doing anything with the ball, really. And you know what? I think we need to push the tempo in this half. Just look to press a little bit more to try and limit the amount of the ball that Man City have in the deeper areas. We've now got a corner to deal with. Ward Prowse is very good at corner deliveries. And it's now 3-0. I feel all embarrassed. Can I, like, can I just go hide? Do, do I have to sit here and do the rest of the video? Can I, I, need to, I need to hide my head in shame or something. You know what? This is much more dignified. I feel better already. Okay, real talk. We're an hour into this game. We've had a few issues of injuries. I'm going to have to take off a gear for Adiemi. We've got to change our game plan here, I feel like, a little bit. And you know what? Let's, you know, let's go with three attackers. Yusuf Demir can definitely play as a striker. You know what? I'm going to play with him on one side. Adiemi is a pressing forward in the middle. And then let's, let's get the wing backs further forward. Let's do something like this. Let's, let's try and play some better football. Higher tempo, but shorter distance. In transition, get it to the wing backs. And let's look to get the ball into the box a little earlier. Let's try and get it to front three, who are hopefully going to cause them some issues. We've got 27 minutes left to turn this game around. Kylian Mbappe may be the man to make something happen here. It's cleared away initially, but only as far as Tomori. And Adiemi's there on the volley, finishes it. I think he's onside here. The linesman has run forward, which is usually a good sign. It's not guaranteed. And, uh, well, Karim is running very quickly back. He seems to think it's going to be given. We've got 25 minutes. We need a few more. But a front three of Adiemi, Mbappe and, uh, well, uh, Demir, that's, that's quite difficult for most defences to contain. Man City might have thought they were running away with this. They might be feeling a little bit nervous now. Eduard with the ball gives it wide to Saka. Can he get it into the mixer? That Haaland guy is there, and I think it's deflected off our defender and ended up in the back of the net. Hmm, that was a weird goal to concede, wasn't it? I don't really know what to say about this. I think it's gone in off Van Dyke. Is that Van Dyke in the middle? It is. I don't know what's going on. It looks bizarre in 3D. I think it's one of those ones that just... It, it looks weird, because it was weird. And, uh, well, any hopes of a comeback? Probably dash there. I mean, still 20 minutes left. Let's, let's remain positive, everyone. Denzel Dumfries. Will Prowse now with it. Lepore. Bring the ball out from the back. Gives it away to Mbappe, though. Now can we make something happen? Kylian Mbappe turns on the afterburner, shoots from range. Edison holds on. Would have been some goal if you'd finished it there. Right, 15 minutes left. There is a point in this game where we have to go as kind of ridiculous as we can if we really want to get it back into it. And I think this is the point to get as ridiculous as we can. Just slide everything to the right and hope. Also, very attacking. Does very attacking work? I suppose we're about to find out. I feel like whenever you go very attacking, nothing happens. But you know what? There's seven minutes left. If we make a comeback, I'll never claim that very attacking does nothing ever again. Ramsdale, good save. Please get up. Can't prevent the corner. And as much as I want to try and feed you the optimistic viewpoint that we could somehow get back into this, I don't think there's any way of seasoning that to convince you that it's worth eating as, a, as an idea. There is no comeback here, is there? Let's be honest. Even if we get one, I don't really believe that with five minutes left, we could truly come back in this game. I'd love to be wrong. I feel like in going ridiculously attacking, we're probably just leaving ourselves more exposed at the back. But let's try and remain positive. Van Dijk's been good today. Now with Kylian Mbappe, who's been running the show a little bit, skips past his man again. There are options in the middle. He finds Demir, who slots it away. There's still five minutes left. We only need two more for a draw. And Demir, as determined as Adiemi, to run back to the halfway line with it. Similar to the game against Liverpool, actually. Mbappe skipping past a fullback and just able to pull the ball in. A really, really nice ball. The volley finish as well by Demir was very good. We probably need another quite quickly. 
It's five minutes of added time. It's not happening, is it? It's not happening. There's no point in pretending. It's going to finish 4-2 here. We've given it a pretty good go, but when you concede four against Manchester City, it's probably going to be quite difficult for you. You can see here, we had the better XG for what that's worth. I feel like we were a tad unfortunate here. Man City very, very clinical with their chances. Mbappe, a standout performer for us. But um, no, disappointing defeat. The unbeaten season in our final season ends rather abruptly. And with it, Arsenal are now ahead of us because they scored in the last minute. I mean, when Arsenal are ahead of us, things really aren't going to plan. So Guillard's going to be out for six to nine days. That's really not ideal. Fofana are also out for a little while. Apparently PSG still keeping tabs on Adiemi. If you want him, you should have put a bid on him in the summer. That's what I've got to tell them. You should have bid on him if you really, really wanted him. I don't think they're serious. I think they're just wasting our time. Now, looking ahead to matches on the horizon, although Arsenal have just gone top, I think they are overperforming off the back of some easier games. So I'm not going to worry about the fact we play them next week. We're going to come back and probably have lost to them, and I'm going to be upset anyway. Hopefully, we will be able to get a win. In terms of when we are going to be back next time, I kind of look over the next few months, and I'm not entirely sure. Honestly, I feel like the focus this year is very much on the Champions League. With that in mind, it might not be until kind of sometime in December I come back. Maybe the Carabao Cup will be a bit of a focus this year because it's the one competition we've not won. Um, but yeah, we're in this weird part of the year where I imagine we're going to play a fair few games between now and next episode. Bit of a mixed bank, a great win against Liverpool, disappointing result against Man City. Still looked kind of competitive in that latter game, so I'm not going to panic too much. Anyway, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be back again tomorrow. And well, until then, it is me, Jack. I'll talk to you all in a bit. I'm out.